Hi students, how are you? I hope each one among you are doing great and well. Welcome to Supnet's classes. This is Rehmat Latif, your biology educator. In this video, we are going to learn about digestion and absorption. As in first part, you might have seen what digestion means. I'll repeat a little bit. Digestion simply means conversion of complex food into simple absorbable form right our digestive system digestive system includes alimentary canal along with glands right along with glands and our uh, digestive system starts right from anterior portion that is mouth up to the posterior portion that is anus now mouth contains we just studied that in mouth or we can say in buccal cavity right in buccal cavity we mainly have teeth and tongue right we have teeth and tongue tongue is a muscular organ which helps in mastication of food <coughs> it's a muscular organ and talking about teeth we need to learn three terms first one is thecodont another one is diphyodont another one is heterodont dentition okay first term that is thecodent that simply means attachment of teeth with the socket of jo jaw bone okay that is known as thecodont then we have diphyodont diphyodont simply means our teeth you know we have we in our uh, life span we have two sets of uh, two sets of teeth first one is temporary teeth or deciduous teeth or we can say milk teeth and talking about uh, the permanent set which comes after you know 10 11 years or 12 years we can say that's termed as adult teeth or permanent teeth okay then we have heterodont dentition it simply means when you have different types of teeth namely incisors canines premolars and molars we just learnt dental formula as well that is 2123 by 2123 that is dental formula i hope this concept is clear right then i'll clear it it's just the recap recapitulation if you want to learn about this in detail you can watch part one of this chapter that is digestion and absorption okay okay let's move forward see its mouth after mouth food will get uh, food will enter into a pharynx which is a common passage for food and air in the form of bolus in the form of bolus then there arises two pipes one is esophagus another one is trachea esophagus another name of esophagus is food pipe and another name of trachea is windpipe then from esophagus there arises oh sorry i'll erase this trachea okay i'll try to make stomach here Okay, this is stomach. Okay, and this sphincter, this sphincter is known as 
since it's present between stomach and esophagus that's why it's known as gastro esophageal sphincter okay i hope this concept about sphincter is clear and what is the function of this esophagus no digestion took place in this esophagus then what happens there it just acts as a passage from mouth from pharynx up to the stomach okay and through which movements food is uh, drawn into the stomach through esophagus it's actually peristaltic movement peris taltic movement okay i hope this concept is clear let me erase it now we will particularly talk about esophagus sorry we will talk about stomach today's topic is stomach okay okay here here we go you know stomach as you might have seen that i just draw say for example this is gastroesophageal sphincter i just draw stomach in this form right that means it's slightly tilted left side it's towards left portion okay it's towards in an abdomen it's situated in upper left portion right i hope this concept is clear now what happens basically it has four major parts it has four major parts namely cardiac portion fundic region body and pyloric portion it has four major parts namely cardiac portion into which esophagus opens and then we have fundic region then we have body main central region and then we have pyloric portion i'll try to write it here say for example say for example this is pyloric portion this is cardiac portion somewhere in, somewhere here because it's in close association with heart that's why it's known as cardiac portion then we have fundic region somehow here okay fundic then we have main central body it's located here then finally we have final portion that is pyloric portion some where here pyloric portion okay i hope this concept is clear we have four main regions cardiac portion pyloric portion fundic region and main central region then you might have heard in lower classes that after stomach we have what we have basically small intestine after stomach we have small intestine right and there is also a sphincter here we have also a single sphincter it present between stomach and small intestine and that sphincter is basically known as here we have last portion pyloric portion right and this uh, thus the sphincter is known as pyloric sphincter okay we have pyloric sphincter here i hope this concept is clear right i'll i'll let me erase it small intestine is also distinguishable into three regions okay duodenum jejunum ileum c here we have say for example this is gastroesophageal sphincter here we have stomach right we have stomach then okay here we have stomach right somehow like this then we have pyloric sphincter here then we have 
small intestine here, right? I'll draw small intestine like this. This is our stomach, this is small intestine, this is cardiac portion, this is fundic region, this is main central body, this is pyloric portion, pyloric region, this is pyloric sphincter, this is gastroesophageal sphincter, this is small intestine. I already mentioned that small intestine is distinguishable into three parts, okay, three regions. First one is jejunum, then we have jejunum, and then we have ileum. First portion here we have duodenum, then we have jejunum, and then we have ileum, which is highly coiled. You can refer your NCRT, your textbooks, in order to check out these diagrams so that it will get more clear. Okay. And ileum opens into, finally, ileum will open into which intestine? It will open up into large intestine, right? right? It will open up into a large intestine, which is also distinguishable into different parts. First of all, please remember these parts mainly. Here we have gastroesophageal sphincter, gastroesophageal sphincter. Then we have cardiac portion. Then we have fundic region. Then we have body. Then we have pyloric portion. Here we have pyloric sphincter. Right? Here we have, okay, here we have, a small intestine, uh, this pyloric portion opens into a small intestine, first part of small intestine that is C-shaped duodenum through a pyloric sphincter which leads to jejunum and finally that leads to a highly coiled portion namely ileum. Okay, this is ileum, this is jejunum, this is duodenum. Ileum finally opens up into large intestine which is further divisible into distinct parts. Okay, let me erase it. I hope this concept is clear, right? Let me erase it. Okay. Now we have we have large intestine. After small intestine, we have large intestine. It is divisible into cecum, colon, rectum, right? Cecum, colon, rectum. You know, cecum, you really need to refer NCRT or your textbook in order to check out these diagrams. Only then it will get more clear. First part of large intestine is small blind sac known as cecum which hosts some symbiotic microorganisms you will learn in 12th standard that inside us we have so many microorganisms in symbiosis okay i will not touch that here because that will get over your head okay that's why i'm skipping that here but please remember that it's cecum which hosts some symbiotic microorganisms okay and we have you might have heard about appendix right you might have heard about appendix that too arises from this cecum okay and appendix is considered as vestigial organ okay that's considered as vestigial organ which means if that will get that will be get removed from our body our body will not get that much affected okay and then we have colon we have four parts of colon okay first one is ascending colon then we have transverse colon then we have descending colon then we had sigmoid colon ascending colon will be like this then transverse colon will be like this descending will be like this then we have sigmoid colon which will be like s shaped again i am saying that you really need to consult your textbook for all these references okay then we have you know transverse colon descending colon sigmoid colon ascending colon finally descending part opens up descending part this part after that, we have uh, sigmoid colon, right? S-shaped colon. Finally, it will read, lead to rectum and rectum will open up into anus. Okay, it will open up into rectum. Rectum will open up into 
NS. Okay, I hope this concept is clear, right? Very nice. Now talking about alimentary canal, talking about alimentary canal, our alimentary canal from esophagus to rectum. I'll write it here. Alimentary canal right from esophagus to rectum possess four layers. We have four layers. It's wall, wall of alimentary canal from esophagus. From esophagus to rectum has four layers, right? And those layers are named as muscularis. Okay, sorry. Serosa. First one is serosa. That's outermost layer, okay? First one is serosa. Then we have muscularis. Then we have submucosa. Then we have mucosa. Right? Mucus is the innermost layer. We almost, every, everybody uh, among us, we almost know that mucus is the innermost layer. Right? So how will you remember rest three layers? You will remember this by simple trick SMS. SMS, then M is the innermost layer. That means serosa, muscularis, submucosa. Then finally, we have mucosa. Okay, I hope this concept is clear. You know, serosa, now we know serosa is the outermost layer and it's made up of mesothelium. Okay, along with mesothelium, along with that layer, we have some connective tissue there. Finally, I'll write it here. Serosa is made up of me made up of mesothelium. Serosa is made up of mesothelium along with what? Along with some connective tissues. Okay, this is serosa. Then we have another layer, namely muscularis. Serosa, then we have muscularis. Muscularis is formed by smooth muscles. That means they are made up of involuntary muscles. We don't have any, you know, control over them. They are made up of smooth muscles. Then finally, which is usually arranged into circular, longitudinal, okay. Then we have submucosal layer. It is also formed by smooth muscles. Submucosa. It's also formed by smooth muscles. It's also formed by smooth muscles. But along with smooth muscles, we have some connective tissue like, you know, we have some connective tissue here. We have nerves. We have blood. We have lymph there. Okay. Blood. We have lymph there. Okay. I hope this concept about some mucosa layer is clear. Then we have innermost layer, namely mucosa. Then we have innermost layer, mucosa. This is layer. Serosa, it's made up of. Serosa is made up of mesothelium along with connective tissue. Muscularis is made up of smooth muscles. Some mucosa is made up of smooth muscles along with nerves, blood and limb. Okay. I hope this concept is clear. Innermost layer is mucosa. And this mucosal layer, which is the innermost layer, mucosal layer, which is the innermost layer, that forms, you know, foldings, inner foldings in our stomach. Sorry, in our small intestine. This mucosa forms folded structures in our small intestine. And that is namely villi okay villi they produce you know villi they what they do they just increase surface area for absorption villi 
increases surface area for absorption in small intestine say for example this is the, this is our small intestine and in small intestine we have small villi like this portions villi on villi we have small tubular structures those are known as since they are present on villi and you know smaller than villi those structures are known as microvilli those structures are known as microvilli okay i hope this concept is clear what microvilli is right and what they do they just increase the surface area in villi we have so many capillaries since they have to absorb the food pass it to the uh, pass sorry they have to absorb the nutrients pass it to the blood through blood we get nutrients so on and so forth okay so these uh, villi they are supplied with network of capillaries and a large lymph vessel called lacteal lacteal villi are supplied with large number of vessels and along with those capillaries we have large lymph vessel villi in villi we have number of capillaries okay villi we have large number of blood vessels along with sorry capillaries we have capillaries along with large lymph vessel along with large lymph vessel which is known as lacteal okay i hope this concept is clear mucosal epithelium has some goblet cells which secrete mucus that helps in lubrication please remember that in the layer of our alimentary canal that is mucosal epithelium they have goblet cells which secrete mucus that helps in lubrication and mucosa also forms gland in the stomach those glands are known as gastric glands mucosa forms gland mucosa forms villi in small intestine and glands in stomach known as gastric glands and as i already mentioned that inside villa in villa we have capillaries we have lymph vessel along with this we have crypts in between the base of villa those crypts are known as crypts of leberkuchen we have crypts leberkuchen okay i hope this concept is clear all these four layers show modification in different parts of the alimentary canal as i already mentioned that in some they form gastric glands in some they form glands and in some they form what we call it as a uh, villi okay right i hope this concept is clear this concept is clear about digestion right so i'll meet you in any other interesting session till then goodbye take care thank you thank you so much